Hey, what's up and welcome to a new devlog about my game Volunteers. Well, it's been a while since I talked about my progress for my game and I guess the reason for that is that I've been doing content for you. Well, now we are back on track for the game. Alright, so previously we were doing a playtest with my friends and that was genuinely fun. We found bugs here and there and also missing features and that's fine, I started to work on this. But guess what? That's not enough. We need more. At the moment we have these two maps in the game and that's fine, we had fun playing with them. The thing is, the tools I was using is just not working anymore for me. Alright, alright, don't get me wrong, I know there are tools out there to build maps, just that it wasn't working for me in my version of Godot. And then I started to think, why don't I build my own mapping tool? It cannot be that hard, right? Well, that's because you're an idiot. I needed to have maps for all of my previous projects, so why not build something that is reusable for all my future projects? So the first thing to do is to build a plugin with Godot where we're going to have a custom node. This is with this node that we're going to paint the terrain and why what? Why it stays there? It's supposed to be painting, not like adding circles. Well, I guess we're gonna have to figure this out. Anyways, so let's continue. We're gonna have our terrain here that we're gonna be able to paint spikes. Um, yeah, that's not exactly what I had in mind. I was expecting more like a terrain. Let's try this again. Oh, that's better, definitely better. I also decided to add different kind of brushes so we can have different kind of painting on the map. All right, I'm gonna try to explain to you the way it works. Basically, let's say we have this image that we're gonna call 8map. We're gonna send it over to your GPU using a shader program and this shader will calculate the 8 of every vertices on the mesh. The 8 is calculated with the numerical value of every pixel on the image. This means that we only need to paint an image to generate the terrain. Pretty awesome, eh? And the shader will do the rest. Increasing the 8 of the terrain is cool, but I also want a way to decrease the 8 and also a way to smooth it. So I added a shortcut to switch the smooth tool. Awesome. It feels a little bit like Blender when you sculpt your mesh and you want a soft, well, you press shift. Next, our terrain so far looks really boring. So I added a way to paint textures. I mean, I had to. I didn't want to have only grass on my terrain. So I wanted a way to paint every texture that I wanted. For example, rocks for mountain or snow are a different kind of grass that only makes sense and that helps create the illusion of having a good terrain. So the goal is to be able to configure all the textures you want to paint on the map. Here I added four, but you can have a lot of textures. How does it work? Well, let's take this image that we're going to call splat map and we're going to divide it into four different channels, the R, G, B and A, and we're going to associate every channel to one of the texture. This way we can generate that kind of image while painting. And yes, even the Alpha is a texture. Very cool. Cool. You know what is cool? Grass. I wanted a way to paint foliage on my map, for example, grass or flowers or stuff like that, that adds a lot to a map. Just by having that, the terrain feels a lot more alive. And this is pretty easy to make it follow the terrain because remember the eight map image that we generated previously? Well, we can use it to determine the eight of each blades, which is cool. There are different ways to generate foliage like that. The way I did it is by using a GPU particle node that allows me to spawn each blade on every vertices of the map. To make sure it doesn't look too much like a grid, I also add a noise texture which allows me to move the foliage just a little bit so it's a little bit more random and yeah, that makes it more pretty. The brush opacity plays with the size of the foliage so you're able to, for example, place smaller blades of grass on, let's say, the edge of a road. Alright, that's cool, but the problem with foliage is that it doesn't have collisions. So I added a tool that let me paint packet scenes on the map. This way it's really easy to paint for example like a forest or rocks or anything you want really. You need to configure the packet scenes in the map editor and then they're available inside of the tool just like this. The cool thing with that is that since we also control the 8 map, you remember right? The image I shown in the video earlier. Well, this allows me to make sure that all the packet scenes also follows the terrain. So let's say that I change the shape of the terrain. Well, it follows it. That's awesome, I think. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to build the terrain because you don't need to worry about all the environmental stuff that you place on the map. Of course, if you place something outside of the map node, this won't follow, but at least the one that I've been placed using the paint tool will work. So I think it's really cool. I am really happy about it. Dear God. It's beautiful.
To be fair, just with these tools right now, it's kind of easy to just build a map that looks decent, I think. The possibilities are endless. You can create about everything. At this point, I'm probably able to create a lot of maps for my game. My goal is to have a lot of maps in my game so we can play a lot of rounds without being bored of having always the same environment. So being able to create a map that is always different is really what I want here. All right, is that enough for now? Okay, okay, I got you. Well, one thing that I wasn't happy about was the foliage, the fact that it doesn't follow the color of the ground, so it doesn't really look really good. So I modified the system, so I send the color of the ground at every pixel, and then the foliage is able to take this color and to apply it to the blades of grass here. In my opinion, that makes it really more interesting to watch and that creates some difference between each foliage. So I think that's really cool. So are we good now? Oh, hell no! Alright, alright, I got you. There is one thing that I really wanted to do and to be fair, this is mostly for fun because right now in my game, I didn't add this need, but I really want to do this. This looks awesome. So I wanted to have a way to paint water in my tool. So the way it works is that you have to pick the option on the right and just paint on the terrain. And that's about it. You have water. The way it works is that it pushes the ground by a certain factor that you decide and it follows the brush. So if you paint just a little bit at first, that won't be too deep. But in the middle, for example, that will be as deep as the factor that you decided. For the water itself, this is another mesh that has another shader that pushes the vertices on the top of the crown. And that's how we have water. All right, is that enough now? No. No! <laughs> oh, don't cry, are you? <laughs> All right, I can add one more thing. Painting water is awesome. This is kind of sad to see that the water doesn't follow, for example, this small hill. That will be really fun to make it move. So I decided to add a small tool that lets you draw the direction of the water. So this way you can control the flow. I think this can be really useful, for example, in this situation where you can control the water so it goes down the hill, but when it goes down the lake, it doesn't move anymore much. This can also be really useful for when you have, for example, a river that goes like in the forest and you want it to have a movement. I think that is really fun. This has been done with a flow map. So when you paint, you basically paint the flow map for the water. This information is then being sent to the shader that changes the UV for changing the direction. I think this is cool. All right, what about now? Are we done now? That's awesome. All right, the last thing I wanted to make sure is that it runs in my game. Seems like it. Well, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of other ideas I could implement in this plugin, but I kind of have to stop somewhere. I mean, I have a game to continue. Well, the plugin itself is not perfect, but it suits my needs for my game. So yeah, and I had a lot of fun doing it. All right, folks, that's all I had to show for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and we're going to see each other on the next one.